mighty God we serve. What a great God we worship. Today is a great day. I want to thank every one of you that God has brought even to be with us today. God bless you. Let's just thank him, give him all glory and adoration, exalt his holy name, magnify him, he is God. Thank him for life. There is none like him, there is none that will be compared unto him. He is mightier than the mightiest, and he is greater than the greatest. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we bless you. We worship. God bless you. Just give him all glory. Lord, we appreciate the opportunity to be in your presence today. Thank you for life. We thank you for healing, for prosperity, for advancements, for your will, for the authority and the power. We thank you for all that you are doing and continue to do. Be exalted and magnified, O oh Lord, for who you are, who you represent, and who you will always be. Have your way, O oh Lord that your name will be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. We give you all exaltation and honor. God bless you. Hallelujah. I just want you to share this on your walls. Invite your friends. Let us have a great time in the presence of God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, yes, Lord. You are mightier than the mightiest. You are greater than the greatest. I am that I am, ancient of days. Omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscience, God. Oh, yes, Lord, there is none like you. There is none that will be compared unto you. Have your way, oh, Lord, Father. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down, Here I am to say that you are my God. You are all together worthy, all together lovely. Thank you, Jesus. All together wonderful to me. Yes, Lord, we worship you. We exalt you, we magnify you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you for who you are, who you represent, and who you will always be. Today, we are talking about the law of the spirit of life. You know, we are not under the law when we yield to the Holy Ghost. When we allow the spirit of God to take over our being, then we are out of law. But if we continue to live by self, then we are under the law. And the, the Bible says, by strength shall no man prevail. Today, we are going to go deeper and just talk to ourselves. I want us to be in, in a sober, reflective form and way so that we can be able to articulate and understand what God is saying. You know, when we come to Christ, we have, we have all absolute freedom. With God, the Bible says all things are possible. So possibilities of everything comes with God. And that is yielding absolutely to the will of God, submitting to the Almighty in every capacity, in every way or form, being in conformity and in alignment with the Holy Ghost. That's where we are free. Oh, Makita Sakataba. Remember when Jesus talked about freedom in the book of John chapter 8, verse 30, the Bible says he preached to the Jews and many believed in him. And I'm speaking to you today, many of us are believers, some of you are pastors, apostles, preachers, ministers, in every capacity. But I want you to know that God can do all things. All things, when I say all things, especially when, when you continue to to do what he has asked you and being in conformity in submission to the holy ghost then you see god move mightily in your life he becomes the the the, the one that bulldozes everywhere and brings down every altar every stronghold every shrine concussion invocation incantation god is the one that is going to take care of that but our job is to yield. 
there's nothing that God wants from us but to yield unto him. Just yield and allow the Spirit to possess you. You know, many times people have been possessed by demons, but I want you to be possessed by the Holy Ghost. If that is possible, then everything is at reach. We have to let in the God that we call. Let God take over. Take absolute control of our life. Let God be God in everything that we do. Let him be our going and coming. Let God be seen in all our operations. Once we do that, then we can now allow ourselves to be used by telling. Oh, I don't know if I'm making a lot of sense, but I want us to pray. The Bible said, the entrance of the world giveth light and understanding to the simple. Lord, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Let the word that we hear and speak now not be an enticing word of a man, but let it be the word of God that will bring glory to thy holy name. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are talking about the law of the spirit of life. Jesus said clearly his mission was to give us life. If you look at what he said in Luke chapter 4, 18, he started to talk about himself. He said, the spirit of God is upon me. And I want you to put yourself in that place. If you have been in Christ, then you still operate under the same function of that same spirit. The spirit be, be, being upon you, then it gives you access to, to do some certain things. So uh, God give us utterance today. I want to be understood today. I want you to, I want God to flow, flow in me, flow in me, Lord. Possess my vocal cord. Use me that I should be used to the fullness of your capacity. Make a name for yourself in my life. That the word that I will speak shall not be an enticing word of a man, but let it be the word of God that brings glory to thy holy name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. So we are talking about the law of the spirit of life. Life. That was all he came to do. Give us life. Not just any life, not just a, any kind of um, life that is out there. See? Abundant life. That's what Jesus came. That we should live life to the fullness, not on our own account. If you are living life to the fullness, you are not living on your own account or by your capacity. But you are living life to the fullness on somebody's time. That means the bills are paid by God, you just enjoy the glory. You just move on with your life. But God is the one that runs you are going and you are coming. He's the one that takes care of everything. Absolutely, everything. You just there. You're just there and let him flow in you. Because the Bible says, in him we live. Acts 17, 28. If you understand that our living is inside of him. But it can only happen when you are in Christ Jesus. That's where you, you have to be, to live inside of him. In him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. But it can only come to pass when we are in Christ Jesus. If any man, any man. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. I want you to see something here. Said there is now no death, therefore no condemnation. There is no absolutely no condemnation to them which are in not Jesus Christ, not in Jesus because Jesus is the person, but Christ is the office. There is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. And look at verse 2 of Romans chapter 8. He said, for the law of the spirit of life, that's where we get our title, in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. So we are free not because we are worthy to be free, not because we have paid the price to be free, but because the price was paid and we, we just have to accept. And how do we get in there? Being in Christ is allowing the Holy Spirit to possess our being, to take over our life. Any man be in Christ. It's a new creature. But now we are talking about there is no condemnation. No, absolutely. And some of you will say, wow, this is true. This is true. I have seen God in the mountain and I've seen him in the valley. I'm telling you what God is and what God can always be. 
there is absolutely no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. That's what the Bible says. Absolutely. So that means I live free, but you are not living by yourself. That's the key. You are living according to the will of the spirit that have taken over your life. Remember in Romans chapter 8, if you push for that verse 14, it says, for they that are led by the spirit are called the sons of God. So you are not in the one that leads yourself everywhere he asks you to go. You just sheepishly go there as he wants you to do it. Hallelujah. You let God loose in your life and just flow in the spirit of God and let God be your guide through his spirit by Christ Jesus because Christ is the office that allows you to flow in that capacity. No condemnation, absolutely. Let's read it again. Romans chapter 8 verse 1, he said, there, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me, made you free from the law of sin and death. So once you are in Christ, then you will start to live above sin and you cannot die the natural death. Oh yes, Lord, God will begin to protect you from spiritual and physical hand. The devil cannot even access you. Hallelujah. There is now no condemnation. Absolutely no condemnation. But let's see 2 Corinthians verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. The Bible said, therefore, if any man, if any man, that means if this is an open-ended invitation, it's an open-ended, there is no limitation to this. Whether you are black, white, Hispanic, Asian, black, any kind of race, or you are Arab, you are atheist, you are Buddhist, Krishna, a Muslim, if any man be in Christ, the moment you yield to the office of Christ, he is what a new creature, all things are passed away, behold, all things have become new. No, the newness of life, you start to see it happen. It just changes. I was talking to another lady um, sometime this week, and she told me how the younger brother, you know, things was not going well. And he's a believer, but, you know, sometimes we believe, but we don't submit. And uh, uh, two of them are different things. You can believe God without submitting to him. That's why Jesus said, believing is not enough. In John chapter 8, he spoke to believers, he said, to those Jews who believed in him, he said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed? So he said the brother was a believer and things were not going well with him in his life, everything. There was a lot of crisis in him, even though he was a believer. At the time, he was now almost giving up, but he wanted to give God another shot. And he wanted to look deeper. And that is where he began to dig. He went into this marathon praying, and waited upon the Lord and began to ask the right questions. And he stayed indoor for 30 days. And he was just inside his room. You come out, take a shower, eat when he breaks his fast, stay back and just worship God, meditate. And after 30 days, it's like nothing happened. I think after the 30th night or so, but I can't get the date, but it was in the end of it. He was laying down there. He has asked God to help him. He has tried to become the right person, to be a good husband, to be a good business person. He has tried to be a good Christian. It's not by power. It's not by power. There is nobody, absolutely, including myself, that can say, oh, by my will, I cannot do this. No. The moment you finish saying it, you can fall that second. We allow God to help us not to fall even to our biases, even to the level of lying. You can't just say, I will not lie by yourself. There is a force that will help you not to lie. You can say, I cannot fornicate by yourself. There's a force, there's a power, but you must allow him. So he said, God, I can't do this thing anymore. I've done everything. I tried to be right, but I couldn't live right. Let me tell you, the only way to 
to do right is to believe right. When you believe right and you submit, in your belief, you submit to the will. So Jesus gave them the key. He said, if you continue in my word, John chapter 8, verse 31, he told the believers, he said, you, believing is not enough, but if you continue in my word, in verse 31 of John chapter 8, then are ye my disciples indeed. Disciple is somebody that has learned God and is submitted and is ready to do everything that is asked to be done. A disciple is a disciplined servant. When you come to that place, that's a place of brokenness. You are not yourself anymore. Everything that, that your knowledge can carry, you, you, you abandon it and just allow God to flow in you. He said, and you shall know the truth in verse 32 now. Then you cannot know the truth as a believer until you become a disciple and you shall know the truth. And look at what freedom is and the truth shall make you free. Does not set you free, it makes you free. It is out of what you know that you live of you practice and freedom comes. So we are talking about the law of the spirit of life, which is Christ Jesus. And the Bible say in here we read in 2 Corinthians 5:17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Because it's not because of the man, but it's the Christ that he has entered into. Let me tell you the office of the Christ. Many times we don't understand, we try to mix it up. Jesus is the person, but Christ is the office. If you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it kind of broke it down what, how the, 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 the Trinity work together. None is working against the other and they don't work out of order. If you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1, it says, now concerning spiritual gifts, if you look at the Greek version or the Hebrew version, it says, concerning spiritual, he didn't talk about gift here, in spiritual things, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. So God didn't want us to be ignorant of the spiritual things. He said, you know that you were Gentiles, unbelievers, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. So we have been led by demons and dumb idols, our father spirit, familiar spirit, the, the, the altar of our family and our villages. But until we came to Christ, so the, 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 the writer Paul was trying to tell them that you have to also be aware of this spiritual part of God. But I want you to see from verse 3 downward to verse 6. He said, wherefore I give you to understand that no man speak by the Spirit of God, call it Jesus a cost, that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. So you can't even preach. I don't know if you, if you are getting where we're going with this. No man can say that Jesus is Lord, unless it is by the Spirit. So you can't even say Jesus Christ is Lord, but by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit has to be the one to act, 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 accompany you, or to lead you, or to speak in you. But look at verse 4. Then this is the now the division of labor in their oppressions. Verse 4, is said, there are diversity of gifts, but the same Spirit, the Holy Ghost, is responsible for every gift in this kingdom. You can find it that when we go down from seven, but I won't go down there. I just want to show you where the office of the Christ is. Jesus Christ is the Lord. But look at verse five. He said, and there are differences, now not diversity, differences of administration for the same Lord. That's Jesus Christ. He is the administration. Everything that comes from the kingdom runs through him. If you know what an office of the administrator is in any establishment, there is nothing, whether you are the CEO or you are the person pushing boxes on the production line, everything goes through the administrator. Administrator, administrator is the, or the administrative office because there's chief administrator, which is the chief operations officer in a company. There's a chief, chief they, they, they say CEO, which is the chief executive who runs the show, but he runs it through a, an operational person, which is the chief operational office. That office of the administrator can be very big, depending on the size of the 
the, 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 their establishment and what they are doing. So we are looking at now, heaven and earth is being run through the office of Christ. He is the administrator. So there are differences of administration for the same law, that's Jesus Christ. And the last, but not the least, verse six, and there are diversities of operations, but the same God, which worketh all in all. So you see where God is now, they put all in him. In the first place in verse 4, say there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. The Holy Ghost is responsible for every gift, whether you are in the prophetic, you are speaking in tongues, you are everything, the gift of healing, and all that is the Holy Ghost. He's the one that manifests everything that Jesus has allowed you to operate in. He's the one that manifests it in you. But the Bible says the differences of administration, whether you are a pastor or a prophet or it's Jesus Christ, that administration. And there are diversities of operation for the same God, which works all in all. Let's move forward. We are talking about the law of the spirit of life. Thank you, Jesus. The law of the spirit of life. So nobody can do anything up to preaching, except is allowed to him. The Bible says even nobody receives anything except is given to him by heaven. Haven't you seen it here? Unless you are receiving from the kingdom of darkness. But if he has to come from God, it must be from one source. And many times we don't understand when we become Christians that we have not been in Christ. And we are following Jesus Christ. And we go to church and we work in the church as workers in different capacity. Some of us even climb to the ranks of being a pastor or a prophet or a bishop and all that. And we have not yielded absolutely to Christ. That is a conscious decision that you must make by yourself. And we have to go through it again and again, deliberately. It's painful because many of us have our biases. We are coming from somewhere and there are things that have been formed in us. But all those things have to break down when you yield to Jesus Christ. And you allow the Spirit now to begin to lead you. If you look at what the Bible says here in Romans chapter 8, let's move forward. In verse, let's say verse 14. We just read verse 1 and 2. Let's go to 14. I just want to up it up. Romans chapter 8 is very, very loaded with the things of the Spirit. If you look at verse 14, it says, For as many as are led, led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god if i let's go back one a little bit you say verse 13 for if ye live after the flesh you shall die but if you through the spirit now you if you live after the flesh they didn't say through what you live after because that is your control but if you through the spirit do modify the deeds of the body you shall live so it is you, the only way to modify your, your biases and the, 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 the man nature that is in you is through the spirit. He said now, verse 14, for as many as are led by that, that spirit of God, they are the sons of God. That's when you are now, you have allowed the office of the Christ to take over your life. And you can now go to... 15, he said, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. I want us to get this. The basis of Christianity is this, that a lot of Christians have grown in the ranks and as you are growing, the demons in your family is growing also. A lot of people have carried the name of the Lord far until one day the, 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 the familiar spirit of their family will show up and it can be anger. They have not dealt with anger and they have become this powerful man that can even cause war or can even destroy civilizations. So you are running your life and going with two 
great civilization inside of you and you have become so great. That's why as we grow, you check yourself, including myself. I'm talking to you now. I go back and check myself many times. I say, God, take care of this. My family thing. Take care of it. Holy Spirit, do it. Because sometimes your ancestors speak to you. They come out. You have to deal with them. Everyone, I told you before, the moment you begin to yield unto the things of God and begin to do the bidding of the Holy Ghost and begin to walk in Christ and walk for Christ and walk as Christ, you must, one way or the other, be confronted with the forces or the demons of your family. They won't just walk away because you are in Christ. They will try to come and test if you are really in Christ. Or you're just checking Jesus Christ out. They will come. The Bible says, man receives nothing except it's given to him from heaven. So don't think that you can do it by strength. It is not possible. Hallelujah. You have to. In life, let me tell you this again. I said it many, many times. Your soul was meet and overcome. His own limitation. Everybody has some limitations in them. But in life, you must meet that limitation somewhere. If your own your family limitations are lying, some people is promiscuousness, fornication, they cannot. I don't care how they go. And sometimes they try, they cry, say, God, please take it away from me. You keep coming back. Let God possess you. And as you grow, that thing will come back to challenge the fabrics of your life. Then you overcome it. And that will be it. When Jesus was baptized, in Luke chapter 3, Matthew chapter 3, the Bible said, the Spirit of God came upon him. And God spoke, said, this is my son with whom I'm well placed. List. God didn't say listen. He said, this is my son. It's a confirmation. With whom I'm well placed. And everybody had it. Wow. This is the son of God. But the devil also had it. While the devil was preparing to go and thwart that thing that had been said to him, he came with the biases of his family. Remember in Bethlehem of Nazareth, there is nothing big that have come out of it. And Jesus just came out from nowhere. Because they didn't know when he was born. They didn't know how he was growing among them. So when he went to the mountain in Matthew 4, the devil showed up. Those are his familiar spirits and biases. And began to challenge the fabrics of what makes him up. If you are the son of God. I want you to think about this. God just said, this is my son. And the first thing the devil said, if you are the son of God. But Jesus didn't want to answer whether he was the son of God. He went straight to Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word. That, so even Jesus has to overcome the limitations of his bloodline. Even though he was not born with the blood of man, but he was carried in a family. And Mary gave birth to him. So there was still a trace of man in him. Christ was not 100% God. He was 100% God and 100% man. So the man in him comes out. But because... He yielded to the Holy Ghost for 40 days. He was able to overpower, to overcome that limitation. He was hungry, but he cannot take orders from the dead. He said, man does not live by prayer alone. I just want you to understand that until we allow the spirit to possess us absolutely and lead us, there are some things that we cannot overcome. And it's not like to scare you, but it is for you to know that you must be led by the Spirit. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. When Zerubbabel, the, the governor of Judah, you know, they were building a house of God. And this house was not being finished. Even though they had the men, they had the resources, they had the capacity. But the job was not being done. And they thought it was a human error. But there was forces that was making that house not to be complete. So God sent the prophet Zechariah to go and speak to the governor, Zerubbabel. And when he came in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, I'm just, I am just told the background story. And he said to him, this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, not by might. So they have might and not by power. 
Zerubbabel was the governor, so he can order more work, workers to come in. They have the resources even. He said, but by the spirit, says the Lord. So if you know that life is not by might, not by power, it is by the spirit, then you, you conform to that spirit. Because if you continue to try to do it by yourself, then you are still under the law. And the Bible says, by strength shall no man prevail. Let the spirit loose in your life. Let God possess you, possess your fabrics, your being, possess your intellect, your organization, your mind, your soul, your spirit. And you see yourself come out and be the man, the woman, the person that God wants you to be. In every decision, you check with the Holy Ghost. In fact, James was saying that if we say tomorrow I'm going to do that, tomorrow, next tomorrow I'm doing that. Say, how can you say that? Do you know what tomorrow will bring? That you can even just sleep and not wake up. He said, you say, by the grace of God, if God will, I will do this tomorrow. Because you don't even control the life that you have. Many of us think we are in charge. And many times you have grown, you have people working for you, you have great establishment, and you think you are the one that controls life. If either the devil is speaking in you or God, you cannot be in isolation. The Bible said, they that know the God that they serve, they shall be strong and they shall do exploit. And sometimes people can also manifest the two of them strongly. Sometimes the devil will sneak in because you have not dealt with something in your life. And the demons of your family will show up. You have to quench it to them. Absolutely submit it to the will of God through the Holy Ghost. And the only way to do that is seek ye God. Jesus gave us a key. Or the fastest way to succeed in life, in spirit and in physical, is Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. There must be righteousness in it. And all these things shall be added. Every other thing that you want to do shall be possible because God has taken preeminence. The Spirit of God is in charge of your life. That's when you can comfortably say, I am being led by the Spirit. For they that are led by the Spirit, Romans chapter 8, 14, they are called the sons of God. I'm telling you, seeking God is in everything, even up to your prayer life. You cannot pray by yourself. You have to let the Spirit of God pray in you and pray through you. You are never sufficient by yourself. You just see that it is not by your own authority that you can manifest anything. You yield all ability to God and watch God, how he will move in your life. Romans chapter, that's in Romans chapter 8. If you look at verse 26, the Bible said here, likewise, the Spirit also helped our infirmities, our inabilities, our weaknesses. For we know not what we should pray as we ought to. But the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings that can never be uttered. That groaning cannot, will not be uttered because it's made by the Spirit. So if it gets to the, even the level of praying, that you cannot pray effectively. Many of us think that it's just by speaking that you make a good prayer. The Bible says we pray and we don't get results. Why? Because we pray amiss. We don't pray according to the will of God. But anytime we pray according to his will, the Bible says he hears us. First John chapter 5. If we pray according to his will, he heareth us. So it, the only way to align with his will is to align with the Holy Ghost. That means prayers will be made by the Spirit. Preaching shall be made by the Spirit. Have you seen it? Even to preaching, I just told you in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, that the Bible said here in verse 3, the B part of it, is that, that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. You can't even say Jesus is the Lord. You can't say it. It's not possible to speak. Because you have not been empowered. The only way to be empowered is to seek the kingdom. To seek God. Hallelujah. Seek Jesus Christ. And his righteousness. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is not food and drink. 
It's summer now in America. It's everywhere is brightening up. There's a lot of graduation party going on, Christian programs, children. It's, it's a lot of things going on. And there's going to be a lot of food between now till August. The sun is shining bright. People are out there celebrating. The beaches are full. If you go to all the beaches, the, the, all the coastal areas of America, it's packed. California, all of them go down to Florida, all the way to Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, go. The East Coast and the West Coast, all the beaches are full, full, full to the brim. Bible says the kingdom of God is not food and drink. That does not mean that we should not eat while we are on it. But the Bible says the kingdom of God is what? Righteousness. Peace. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then when you are doing that, that is where you can comfortably say what the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Therefore, there is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, because you are seeking God. There is no condemnation whatsoever. The devil will show up and not see anything to condemn you of, because he cannot see you. You are now in Christ. That's why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians again, chapter 5, 17, therefore, if any man be in Christ, I'm talking about the office. It's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The newness of life, newness of heart. That's when you are, you, are, you are not sufficient by yourself. You are not by yourself. Say, oh, I can't do my strength. No, 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 no. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse, chapter 3, verse 5. Second Corinthians 3, 5. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves, to think anything as of ourselves. If you, anytime you put self in anything, then you lose God, you lose the Holy Ghost. So we are not sufficient of ourselves or to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Have you seen it? He is the one that is all sufficient in you, our sufficiency. Luke chapter 24, 49. The Bible says, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. This is when Jesus was about to ascend on the day of ascension. But I, I want you to see what he said here. That's the big part of it. He said, But tarry you in the city of Jerusalem until you endured with power from above. So he told them, don't just move around. Stay here. It's a commandment. Tarry in Jerusalem until you are empowered, you are endured from on high. Until you are endured with the power from on high. Until there's a power upon you. Tarry in Jerusalem. You know, what is lacking with us is we are so in a hurry to go out there, to start a business, to get into marriage, to, we don't want to wait. We don't want to wait. And sometimes you have prayed, you have fasted, God have not spoken. Just wait. Do what waiters do. Serve God. Just keep serving him. Don't be in a hurry. If you run out there, if you know that you cannot do it by strength, no man shall prevail. What are you running out to go and start? You want to start a business? You have prayed, you have fasted, Wait upon the Lord. Let him empower that business. Marriage, an adventure, a project, ministry. Let God empower it. So Jesus said, tarry, wait in Jerusalem. And it was clearer in Acts chapter one, when he spoke to them, if you look at verse four, he said, I'm being assembled together. It's the same scenario, but it's been explained in different forms. Be assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said, He, you have heard of me. But to go back to verse 8 now, but you shall receive power. So, what are we waiting for? Don't go out, you shall receive power. 
after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witness unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. So Jesus said, just wait. Why is it hard for Christians to wait these days? We want to do something. We want to expand sometimes. It can be just, you are doing very well. You are prospering where you are. And you say, I just want to expand. You begin to, you remember the man in Luke chapter 12. We don't have time to talk about him. The Bible says he was so rich. God bless this man. He became so successful. And he began to think of himself. He said, my soul rejoice for you have so much to eat for yourself. Take it easy. Close this business. I'm tired of running this thing, going every day, coming out here, paying people. I don't need to pay them again. Shut it down. Put all my back money in different investments, in annuity. Put it out in insurance. Go and save up my money in stocks. Put it in some kind of uh, cryptocurrency. And he was just buying dividends, buying bonds, buying real estate. Because the Bible says he, he increased his bank. A bank is in place you stop. It's like a bank. He said, my soul rejoiced. He went down to the, 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 one of the coastal area, maybe somewhere in, in Georgia, Savannah, or maybe Florida. Or it can be anywhere. You can put any country together. And they sit on the beach and they put red wine to him and he was drinking. I said, my soul rejoice. For you have so much to eat and drink. Take life easy. Take life, JJ. Oh. The Bible said that same night God came and said, thou fool. Who shall all these things you have acquired be? And the Bible said your soul is required for you tonight. God killed him. And you say, oh, why will God kill him? He never stole. But look at what the man did. He put a lot of people unemployed. And they have to go back to pray to get a job. And the job that they are looking for, God has already given it to that man. He retired with God. The same God that empowered him to become successful when he got money. Some people will just join God. I say, let me be a member of some kind of secret society. So I can get protection or get connection. When you were coming out, you didn't think of the connections. God connected you until you became big. Now you want to give the glory to the devil? I don't have time to go there. What about David? God came reminded him when he got him out from the sheep pool. God reminded him where he was coming from many, many times. And the Bible said, God, they asked Jesus, why? Why did God kill this man? Jesus said he was not rich towards God. He was not rich towards God. So you can be rich and not be rich towards God. The man did not yield to the spirit. He wanted to save up his, he didn't consult God. He was just talking about himself. He said, my soul rejoice for you have so much. Heart. Wealth is not a bad thing. God is the wealthiest. God created the heavens and the earth. So we putting him in that kind of scenario is, is, is heresy. Let me not make that comparison. God is the one that makes people well. The Bible says, you should remember the Lord your God for it is he that give you the power to get wealth. But I'm talking about when God begins to prosper you. God begins to elevate you. Make you be, become great. Don't ever look in yourself and say, oh, I have arrived. I just showed you here where Paul was telling us in the book of 2 Corinthians. Chapter 3, verse 5. He said, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. So wait, why not wait? Why is it that it's hard for people to wait? Wait and let God give you the next direction. Yes, you want to expand your business, you want to do other things. You have seen opportunities coming and you need to dive into it, but ask God first. Is that the will of God? Jesus said, Tari in Jerusalem, wait until the Holy Ghost is come upon you. That is when you can go and preach. And do you know they waited? After Jesus left, they waited for another 10 days before the spirit came. But from the time he resurrected, it was 50 days they were in that upper room. Oh, Makataraba. The Lord shall give you a revelation. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. The Bible said, This I say there, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I don't have time to go into all the things that are written here. 
For the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And they are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you could. But if ye be led by the spirit, verse 18 now, you are not under the law. So the Bible says, walk in the spirit. Just allow the spirit to flow in you, to use you, to move you. Don't try to be in a hurry. The Holy Ghost knows the way. He's the one that put everything in perspective. When God said, let there be light, he makes light to come. So wait for him. Don't be in a hurry. So that you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Sometimes you are so ambitious. Ambition is not God. Ambition is self and flesh. Let God lead you. Let that passion channel all that passion to God. And God will begin to lead you. We are going to pray now. The Bible said here, in Isaiah chapter 40, as we round up, have thou, verse 28, we are reading to 31, have thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Have thou not known, have thou not heard. So if you, if you have not heard, I'm telling you now, then if you have heard, the God Fainted not. He is almighty. Every strength is in him. God does not worry about tomorrow. He, he knows the end from the beginning. There is no searching of his understanding. But look at what he does if you, if you care to know. He gives power to the faint. Verse 29. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. So he is, God is always full of strength. And might. So if you don't have, wait for him. He will give it to you. He said, even the youth shall faint. So young men that think that they have arrived, some of you, your muscles are growing, and you, you are beginning to have beers. I remember when I was coming up, I, I think at the age of 12, 13, I already had beers. My friends don't even have. You know, I always carve it. I like to show that I've arrived. I have some this, you know, I was built well as, as, a, as a person. So you know, my, my, I have these muscles, and I like to show it off. As the Bible says, the youth shall faint, and be wary. A young man shall utter it for. Those of you that think that you are standing now, those muscles that you are looking at 20 years from now, they will not be there. Even if they are there, they can't take you far. He said, the youth shall faint and be wary. Tomorrow you go to think of hunger, think of what you will do, and some of the things that you think that you just zooming out because you are so young, everything will work for you. You go and life will beat you down. 10 years pass, you look back and say, oh, what a foolish boy or girl I, I am wait the youth shall faint and be weary a young man shall ultra fall but look at what god will do to the people that wait for him in 31 but they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wing as eagle they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint that's where i want us to go today Let's ask God to take over, possess our being. In him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. The only way you, you live in him is if you be in Christ. If any man be in Christ. Hallelujah. He's a new creature. And the only way, the way to get to Christ is to believe in him. You must be saved. And if you're already saved, continue to wait upon him. Don't do anything by strength or knowledge. The Bible says, by strength shall no man prevail. It's not by might. I don't care what you have or what you know. It's not by power. You might be in an elevated position in life. But it's by the spirit. Can we all agree that we have to go back to God and just stay there until God releases you to do anything? It doesn't matter whatever it is. Even to the place of getting married, increasing your business, preaching the word of God, going out every day. Let God lead you. Let the Holy Ghost take absolute control in your life. I want us to pray one prayer, just one prayer. Say, God, I yield unto you again. Help me to align according to thy will. For you say, if I ask according to thy will, you will hear me. 
Lord, even my prayer, I cannot just pray. I want you to take over my vocal cord. Pray in me and pray through me. Use me to the fullest, Lord. In every capacity that you want, I yield unto thy will. Holy Spirit, take absolute control of me. As I'm praying this prayer, I want you to continue to pray. Say, God, take control of me. Take absolute control. I give you authority. Take preeminence in my life. Possess my being. Use me. Bakaraba sikata bababa. Le bagashiko to go rikata sak. In the name of Jesus Christ. And if you are not saved, then you can pray this prayer also. You have to first believe in Jesus Christ and confess it by your mouth. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, if we confess the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our heart that he died and resurrected, verses, we shall be saved. So I want you to say, Lord Jesus Christ, I confess you as my Lord and I believe in my heart that you died and resurrected for my sins. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. God bless you. I love you all with all my heart. But above all, Jesus, love you the more. Have a wonderful week ahead of you. The Lord shall continue to be with you. God bless you.